On June 23rd, 2009, Red Ball, the first game in the Red Ball series, made its debut on its sponsoring website King.com. A bit of a slow burner at first, the game quickly surpassed all expectations by reaching over 700,000 plays by the end of September on King.com alone. For Eugene Fedosev, the creator of the Red Ball series, this was just the third game that he ever publicly released, following up the two disappointing releases of Raindrop and Fastone Pyramid with this smashing success. Many people loved the game and began to wonder if a sequel was in the works, but as it turned out, one was already planned before Red Ball 1 even released. In the source code version of the game provided to the community by Eugene himself, the text at the end of level 12 usually prompting the player to travel to King.com to play the last five bonus levels of the game instead reads, The End, Red Ball Platformer 2 coming soon. On the text accompanying the Newgrounds release of the game, a similar message can also be found. Indeed, it seems like Eugene knew that he had a huge success on his hands before he even released it. But could Red Ball 2 live up to the expectations set by the first game in the series? On October 8th, 2009, people were able to find out. Due to Red Ball having become an established name in the Flash game scene due to the success of the first game, the play count on Red Ball 2 accelerated much quicker than that of the first game in the series. While it took Red Ball 1 around 5 months to reach a million plays, Red Ball 2 achieved that figure in just about 2 months. But how did the gameplay actually stack up? Red Ball 2 took the series in a drastically different direction. Placing unique puzzles in almost every single level, while adding tons of new gameplay elements like water, airstreams, darkness, stars, toxic water, switches, disappearing blocks, and much, much more. Red Ball 2 also had 20 main levels, 8 more than that of Red Ball 1. Like Red Ball 1, Red Ball 2 has 5 additional bonus levels that were sightlocked to King.com. The puzzles in Red Ball 2 were often long and convoluted, and every single star needed to be collected in each level before the flag at the end could be collected. Due to the much greater quantity and complexity of levels in Red Ball 2, it proved to be a much longer game in terms of completion time. The graphics in the game also received quite the overhaul, and whether it was for better or for worse is up to one's own interpretation. Regardless, Red Ball 2 was received quite well as a casual experience, and it would become an important stepping stone in the progression of the Red Ball series. However, what did all the aforementioned changes to gameplay mean for potential speedrunners of the game? If the game is filled with long puzzles that don't allow for sequence breaks due to the star mechanic, wouldn't that make for a less than ideal speedrunning experience? And when were the first Red Ball 2 speedruns even performed? As it turns out, the question of when the first Red Ball 2 speedrun was performed is a very complicated one to answer. The first Red Ball 2 speedrun that was submitted by a player to the GameSpeedrun.com leaderboard was a 2140 time set on the 31st of March 2015 by Greggy. However, it seems highly improbable that nobody else recorded a full playthrough of the game and uploaded it online in a span of six years after the game's release. By spending several hours scouring YouTube for ancient recordings of the game, I found several playthroughs of note that could possibly be added to the leaderboards and marked as world records. Going chronologically, we have this two-part walkthrough of the game that was uploaded on October 9th, 2009, a day after the release of the game. This playthrough is actually performed on an older version of the game that records a death count, rather than the score that is present in the current version of the game. Unfortunately, this older version is currently lost media. Combining the two recordings of the walkthrough yields a time of around 15 minutes flat, but the lack of any game or background audio makes it impossible to tell if this walkthrough is spliced, a likely reality, and the slight discontinuity between the two recordings makes it unsubmittable to a leaderboard anyways. It's impossible to know if the gap between the two recordings is 1 second or 10 hours. So next up, we have a six-part playthrough of the game by a Let's Player named Catman, uploaded on October 10th, 2009, two days after the release of the game. The time of this run would come out to roughly 39 minutes and 58 seconds, but unfortunately, the six parts of the Let's Play are not continuous. You see, from around 2006 until July of 2010, YouTube limited the length of all uploads to under 11 minutes. This system was in place as an effort to combat the rampant uploading of full TV episodes and movies to the platform. As YouTube's content ID system improved, this limit was raised to 15 minutes in July of 2010 and then was removed in December of 2010 for all verified YouTube accounts and good copyright standing. 
However, still working with the 11 minute limit, Catman had to split up his Red Ball 2 Let's Play into many parts, opting to stop and start new recordings between episodes, leaving small gaps in the playthrough that unfortunately make it unverifiable as a speedrun. Next up to bat, we have a four-part playthrough of the game performed by Sarkantar, uploaded January 27th through January 30th, 2012. Though these videos were uploaded on separate days, the recording is actually continuous, with each part picking up exactly where the last one left off. Piecing the run back together yields a 20 levels time of 41 minutes and 16 seconds, which, to the community's current knowledge, is the first verifiable Red Ball 2 world record ever performed. Though, that definitely was not the intention of the playthrough. Yay, I'm gonna roll around for a bit. I'm gonna roll around on the floor for a bit, okay? I'm gonna roll around on the floor for a bit, okay? <laughs> Moving forward, we have a two-part Red Ball 2 tutorial uploaded by Carlos Venencia on January 6th, 2013. This could have been an enormous world record of around 16 minutes and 11 seconds, but unfortunately, the two recordings are barely discontinuous, having a brief jump on the menu before level 10, making it unverifiable. Finally, to round off the ancient Red Ball 2 recording expedition, we have a full playthrough uploaded by the Fado96 on January 31st, 2014, clocking in at 22 minutes and 13 seconds, a new world record. So yes, despite all that digging, Greggy's 2140, set on March 31st, 2015, remains a historic world record. Since it is the first world record with acceptable video quality, let's dive into this run to get a brief overview of what speedrunning Red Ball 2 is like. Level 1 involves rolling Red Ball to the right and collecting the three stars atop this mound before collecting the flag, where 1.5 seconds pass before the game progresses to the next level. Levels 2 and 3 involve similar basic platforming, but in level 4, Red Ball must travel vertically through a large airstream to reach the flag, stopping at the top of the stone platforms to collect all the stars, with optimal airstream movement having a very high skill ceiling. Level 5 is the first level to introduce a puzzle, requiring a wooden ball to be pushed onto a pulley, which raises a platform that allows Red Ball to reach the end. Level 6 has a top section with moving platforms leading to a single star. Red Ball can then enter the underground section, wait for the elevator cycle, and avoid a few crushers before taking the airstream leading to the flag. Level 7 involves raising a gate, pushing a plank on top of the water, and then rolling a stone ball to the right side of the level allowing for the top of the castle to be reached. Level 8 involves filling this gap with water, with the spigot having to be opened for over 6 seconds, where after the wooden ball can be pushed across and onto the pulley, raising the gate. Level 9 involves lowering a drawbridge and then rolling a cannon across, which shoots cannonballs at the castle's wall, slowly removing it stone by stone, eventually creating a gap that is large enough for Red Ball to fit through. The trajectory of these cannonballs is partially determined by RNG and can make this 30 second long process take even longer than normal. Level 10 involves raising a platform by activating a switch for long enough and pushing the flag boat across the water and toxic water to allow all the stars to be collected. Level 11 is where the puzzle complexity really starts to ramp up. On the bottom level, there is a moving platform that is activated by a switch present on the top level. Greggy follows the intended solution of moving the platform below the hole on the right side, dropping the box from the top level onto the platform, moving the platform back all the way to the left, pushing the box onto the elevator and then onto the switch, waiting for the platform to complete a full movement cycle, and then riding it to the flag. All in all, this takes Greggy almost two whole minutes. Level 12 involves difficult platforming on sloped platforms to reach the flag at the bottom of the level. This level can be made a lot easier by using the down arrow to increase Red Ball's friction with the ground, but Greggy's gameplay makes it seem like they are unaware of this as they end up taking several deaths in the level as a result. Level 13 thrusts Red Ball into the darkness, as the stars must be collected and the obstacles avoided with very limited visibility. Level 14 is similar to level 8, but there are now two reservoirs to fill water with, with the second hole filling from the first. Water must be taken from the middle of the second reservoir to spin a turbine that opens the ground cover for the tunnel that the flag is housed in. Level 15 houses a very lengthy puzzle, requiring three wooden shapes to be transported to the top of the level and placed on their respective switches, opening the passage to the flag. The triangle starts here, near the start, the square starts here, near the top of the elevator, and the circle starts here, in a tunnel accessed at the bottom of the elevator. 
Because of the ordering of the buttons, the triangle has to be transported in front of the square at some point. Reggie accomplishes this by pushing the square down to the level of the triangle and then pushing them both into the airstream, carrying the triangle past the square. All in all, the level takes them around a minute and a half. Level 16 involves pushing a couple of wooden planks into the toxic water and then using them to collect the three stars above the gap. Greggy ends up making contact with the toxic water on both the first and second planks, but Redball ends up living. This is because Redball has a hidden health bar that has 30 points, and Redball loses one point of health every frame that he spends in toxic water. Greggy spent 26 frames in contact with the toxic water, just barely managing to live. Level 17 involves simple platforming on some hidden platforms that become visible as Redball makes contact with them. Level 18 involves some tricky platforming on blocks that disappear as Redball leaves contact with them. One must take care to leave blocks at the start of the level so it is possible to reach the flag again once all the stars have been collected. In level 19, one is intended to collect all of the stars atop these planks without ever toppling them over, as initiating a domino effect will dump stars over the edge. Greggy struggles greatly with this level, as it takes them over 2 minutes and 30 seconds to complete. In level 20, Redball must avoid the rising toxic water while collecting stars, eventually able to use the boat to reach the top section of the level, reclaim Redball's crown, and complete the game. As mentioned before, there are 5 additional bonus levels, levels 21 through 25, that one can play if they travel to the game's sponsoring website king.com, but Greggy does not end up playing them, so the explanation of those will have to wait. Though Greggy's run had many obvious ways to improve, it wouldn't be until January 29th, 2017 that a new challenger would approach. In their first ever completed speedrun of the game, a speedrunner named Moore finished Red Ball 2 in 17 minutes and 38 seconds, a new world record. Compared to Greggy, Moore simply committed less mistakes, floundering far less in levels 12 and 19, actually implementing a creative backup in 19 to prevent having to reset the level and try again. Moore choked greatly in level 20, spending over 3 minutes and 30 seconds in the level. Continuing to stream throughout the day, Moore set a 1659, then a 16 flat, and finally a 1533. In this 1533, Moore actually entered level 20 slower than they had in the 1738, but significantly better execution in the level led to a much better time. Moore left the game alone for a while after this day of attempts, though they did briefly come back to claim a 1528 on February 10th, 2018. However, things wouldn't really start to accelerate until I, Maximum, picked up the game on October 14th. To best Moore's 1528, I had a couple of tricks up my sleeve that would allow me to save quite a bit of time on some of the levels. In level 11, I collected the first star, and then I moved the platform into a position that would allow me to jump to it, collect the second and third stars, and then jump back. I then moved the platform under the fourth and fifth stars, pushing the box through the hole to the lower level and landing on it, allowing me to collect the last stars and complete the level. This saved me around 30 seconds over the intended method. Then, in level 18, I used a much faster route to collect the stars that saved around 20 seconds. I did play the 5 bonus levels after completing the 20 levels run, so let's take a look at those levels to see what they are like from a speedrunning standpoint. Level 21 is a stone pyramid of sorts, housing a star in each of its 10 compartments. This does appear to be impossible to complete at first, but the visual representation of the level does not match where the hitboxes actually are, and there are enough hitboxes missing to allow Redball to collect all the stars within the pyramid. Level 22 is also not what it appears to be, with this seemingly empty level actually having 122 blocks that only become visible as Redball makes contact with them. This invisible maze has quite a few different ways to be traversed, as I opted to take this route through the level to collect all the stars and reach the flag back at the beginning. Level 23 features a short golfing minigame known as King Golf, where this ball must be carried into this hole for the level to be completed. I made an extremely serious world record progression video about this single level on April 1st, 2021, which I highly recommend checking out if you haven't already. Level 24 features a symbol puzzle, where invisible blocks to the right must be revealed to show which symbols must be input on the three buttons to the left. The starting symbol on each button is randomized at the start of the level, and there are five symbols that are cycled through, advanced on each contact with the button with the order square, squiggle, line, arrow, and triple bar. 
The correct combination is square, arrow, squiggle every single time, so speedrunners have no need to find the combination from the hidden blocks. Since each button has five possible starting symbols, there is a 1 in 125 chance that the correct ones are selected by default, opening the flag gate right away. On the flip side, it is equally likely that one starts with the worst starting symbols possible, squiggle, triple bar, and line, requiring four contacts with each button to achieve the correct inputs. In level 25, the ending flag tracks opposite to Red Ball's X position along an elevated arc. Red Ball must platform on some hidden blocks on the left to be able to drop down on the ending flag while it is at the very center of the level the only position where it is able to be collected. I ended up finishing the full 25 levels of the game in 17 minutes and 36 seconds. Going back to the 20 levels run, I did commit large mistakes in levels 13 and 16, leaving quite a bit of room for improvement. However, I wouldn't need to expend much effort to beat it, as a huge revelation made three days later would completely flip Red Ball 2 speedrunning on its head. In early 2018, speedrunner Motor Jam found an interesting guidepost present on the Red Ball 3 leaderboard that had gone completely unnoticed for many months. The guide posted by someone named Truman to Good read, If you press pause and jump while on the ground, your game will be paused, but when you clicked P again, you will jump. Knowing this, if you press P and jump at the same time, then hold space and click P, you jump twice as high. I found this messing around, so this should make the run a lot easier. Motor Jam was shocked to find that this glitch worked in Red Ball 3 exactly as described, with it becoming known as the pause jump. Essentially, the pause jump works by allowing Red Ball to jump, but pausing the game before Red Ball is able to leave the ground. On the pause menu, the timer that restricts how often Red Ball is able to jump runs out, being half a second long. Thereafter, while the jump button is still being pressed, the game is unpaused, and since Red Ball is still on the ground, another jump is executed. So, the force from two jumps is applied to Red Ball on the same frame, giving him the height of at least those two jumps combined. Motor Jam first posted about this glitch on September 26th, 2018, but I somehow completely missed that message, not becoming aware of it until another conversation that took place on October 16th, 2018. Jam claimed that the glitch worked in Red Ball 2, but that it wouldn't save time because of the star mechanic. In Red Ball 2, the execution of the glitch was slightly different since there is a two-frame delay added to every single jump uh, for some reason. So, you had to press jump and then press the pause button exactly two frames later instead of pressing the buttons on the exact same frame like in Red Ball 3. This, consequently, made the trick more awkward and inconsistent to perform on Red Ball 2. However, what about Jam's claim that the trick would be mostly pointless? Well, let's just say, that wasn't exactly true. Despite having to still collect all of the stars in each level, pause jumping bypassed puzzles in levels 5, 7, 9, and 17, saving around 5 seconds, 30 seconds, 1 minute, and 5 seconds respectively. Level 25, the last bonus level, could also be completed around 10 seconds faster with the strategy. Pause jumping was also sprinkled around in other levels like 16 to skip a bit of platforming. Red Ball 2 was getting significantly faster thanks to pause jumping, but the game was far from its limit in terms of optimization. I mean, the last record in the montage, my 11.33 on October 30th, was set during a random no-reset full series Red Ball run. With no competition in sight, I didn't have much motivation to try to beat my record, but thankfully, a new runner would enter the ring less than a week later. On November 4th, 2018, Backspace claimed a world record of 11.07 with his first ever submitted Red Ball 2 speedrun. To save a bit of time, Backspace added a pause jump into level 10, while also using a sooner pause jump in 16. In level 15, he attempted a new strategy where, instead of gently guiding the circle to its respective button, he simply rolled it from the elevator with the right amount of speed to have it stop on the button naturally from friction, saving a whole elevator cycle. Unfortunately, he failed the strategy, as he had to go back to correct its position. 
Backspaced incorporated another new strategy in level 20 where he used pause jumping to collect the crown and all the stars at the top of the level without having to use the boat. This saves lots of time having to wait for the toxic water to rise, as Backspaced is able to complete the level by contacting the boat near its original position, saving around 10 seconds in this instance. With this, a rivalry had formed between Backspaced and myself, as we would continue to trade the record back and forth until someone could come out on top. The next day, I scored myself a 1043 by executing levels 14 and 15 without the mistakes that Backspaced had, and I also completed the new level 20 strategy around 7 seconds faster. The run nearly died at this jump in level 18, but I barely managed to jump on this corner of this block without it disappearing. Three days later, Backspace got onto yet another great pace in the late game. He had a cleaner levels 1 through 13, fixed the mistakes he had in 14 and 15, and then implemented a new method of completing level 19 that saved him a bunch of time over the jump once on each plank method. He opted to, instead, skip some of the planks, collecting the remaining stars on the ground once the planks fell backwards. So you can imagine then, little old sleep deprived me sitting in front of my janky ass monitor and my scuffed mechanical keyboard when all of a sudden this run drops out of nowhere. I get past level 18 and level 19 relatively quickly. All that's left is level 20, the pause jump nightmare. I know I haven't been hitting my pause jumps consistently. I know I've choked this level in the past. It's 12 a.m. for crying out loud. Why am I even up? But still I persist. One jump down, two, all that's left is one star. I set up the jump and... Backspace scored the first sub 10 minute time in the game's history. His 9.58 was a big step up from my 10.43, but I wasn't yet down for the count. Three days later, I snapped back with a 9.46. In level seven, I implemented a new route where I pause jumped on top of the castle, rolled to the stairs, and then rolled back to the flag, instead of using the underground tunnel and coming in from the right side. I had cleaner execution than backspaced in lots of areas like levels 14 and 20, but I still managed to lose almost 20 seconds in level 16 from a death. In my description, I made the possibly bold statement that a sub 930 was obviously possible. But would one of us be able to achieve it? On the very same day, Backspace got onto a decent run that did not have a death in 16, which put him around 12 seconds ahead of me. However, his 18 was a bit sloppy and he opted to complete level 19 the safe way, just jumping once on the top of each plank. Thankfully, his level 20 was really solid, and he scored a new world record of 9 minutes and 41 seconds. Inching closer and closer to the sub 930, it appeared that it wouldn't be long before one of us would achieve it. And on November 13th, just 9 days after our rivalry began, one of us would have a golden opportunity. Entering level 20, I was easily on pace for the sub 930. All it came down to was nailing each pause jump and optimally collecting the stars at the end. Unfortunately, I committed two costly mistakes and only scored a 935. I stated, early game and 20 are the biggest sources of time save. I have now hit the tennis ball again. Unfortunately, backspaced wouldn't be there to hit it back to the other side of the court. No, 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 he, he didn't die or get carpal tunnel or anything. He just stopped playing the game. Let's go, baby. I'm back in the game. I'm back in the game at 539. It doesn't matter, baby. It doesn't matter. Come on. If you've seen some of the videos about Red Ball 1 on this channel, then Rare EG is a player that needs no introduction. The world record holder in Red Ball in late 2018, EG had the uncanny ability to come out of nowhere and set amazing times, featuring legendary pop-offs at the end of his run. 
In October of 2018, I first announced my intent to sweep the records for every single category in the Red Ball games recorded on speedrun.com at the time. Red Ball 12 levels and 17 levels, Red Ball 2 20 levels and 25 levels, the any% percent and 100% categories for Red Ball 3, Red Ball 4 Volume 1, Red Ball 4 Volume 2, Red Ball 4 Volume 3, Red Ball 4 Mobile, and Red Ball 5, a licensed game that is not a part of the mainline series as well as the four multiple Red Ball games categories, Full Series Any% percent, Full Series 100%, Red Ball 4 Any% percent, and Red Ball 4 100%. This equated to 20 total categories. I got somewhat close to the accomplishment at times, but other people continuing to push the records lower across the series kept placing it just outside of my reach, leading me to essentially concede defeat on November 17th, 2018. However, in February of 2019, I noticed that I was getting somewhat close to it again. Two new categories had been added to the series, any percent glitchless categories for Red Ball 4 Volumes 1 and 3, but on the 21st of February, I noticed that I had 16 out of 22 of the records, some records being very attainable, while others requiring far more effort to claim. That same day, I reclaimed the Volume 1 any percent record from Motor Jam, placing me at 17 out of 22 records. At this point, Rare EG, who had become my biggest speedrunning rival, was beginning to become very alarmed that a sweep might actually happen. One person claiming every single record in the Red Ball series? He had to do something to stop it. So, on February 25th, EG formed a Discord server with himself, Motor Jam, and Maximal with one purpose. Form a coalition to stop me from getting the series sweep. The plan was simple get a bunch of records offline, and then unhoard them all at once in a single video, a common practice in the GoldenEye community that the Rare Gang was a part of. EG immediately set his eyes on claiming both of the records in Red Ball 2, and over the next two days, he did exactly that. Let's go, baby. Come on. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> Living up to his legacy, EG managed to swiftly become the king of Red Ball 2, capping off his accomplishments with yet another iconic pop-off. To help best me, EG implemented a new strategy in level 6 that involved pause jumping on the moving platforms to skip having to wait for them on the way back, saving an elevator cycle. EG also came up with a new strategy in level 19 that involved using a pause jump to jump all the way to one of the later planks and purposefully causing the planks to fall over backwards. He collected a few stars at the end normally and collected the rest as they lay on the ground. So yes, EG was the king of Red Ball 2, and I, and many others, had no idea. He continued his secret record conquest, taking the Red Ball 3 any percent record from me by a second on March 7th. Unfortunately, Motor Jam was unable to reclaim Red Ball 4 Volume 1 any percent, and Maximal was unable to improve his any percent record in Red Ball 5. EG ultimately decided to unhoard his Red Ball 3 record in the form of an April Fool's video, and his Red Ball 2 record six days after that on April 7th. Though EG may have foiled my series sweep plans, these kinds of shenanigans are exactly what keeps the hobby of speedrunning exciting and fun. EG had claimed the fabled Sub-930, but would it be able to stand the test of time, and was a sub 9 minute run a possibility? On July 18th, 2019, EG claimed a new world record of 921 thanks to him executing an essentially flawless level 20, with zero missed pause jumps or star mishaps for the first time ever in a world record run. Two months later, EG's reign would finally be toppled as speedrunner Thog N claimed a 919 on September 13th. Thog implemented a small strategy in level 3 where he would perform a single jump against this wall to scale it instead of executing a pause jump. He also used a new approach to level 11 that saved some time by leaving 3 stars to be collected at the end of the level instead of 2, made even faster by executing 2 pause jumps on the elevator to save some waiting. 
Thog messed up the challenging platform jump in 13, but managed to recover by exiting the toxic water in a swift manner. In level 16, he incorporated a new strategy where he would skip sliding one of the wooden planks to the toxic water, instead opting to take a brief swim to collect the first star, barely avoiding death. Thog nailed EG's pause jump strat in 19, but he unfortunately wasted around 10 seconds fishing for stars that ended up under planks. He was tied with EG going into level 20, but he thankfully had a trick up his sleeve, a brand new pause jumping route. Instead of having to wait for this disappearing platform at the start, Thog pause jumped up to the platform with the third star and then jumped off of the disappearing platform to the platform with the spikes. He missed time two pause jumps later in the route, but the time save that he had accumulated earlier in the level was enough to score him a new world record, though he wasn't too thrilled about it. While people waited to see if EG would reclaim the record or if Thog would improve his time, another challenger would surprisingly emerge. From the 1st of September to the 12th, Speedrunner DHA absolutely tore through the Red Ball 4 Volume 3 world record, pushing it from a 449 to a 429. DHA is an absolutely prolific speedrunner, submitting almost a thousand runs in the seven years that he has been active, dozens of which are still world records today. Due to his complete domination of so many different kinds of Flash games over so many years, he is considered by many to be the greatest Flash game speedrunner of all time. Maybe some future videos on this channel will chronicle some more of his amazing accomplishments. On September 18th, DHA submitted his first Red Ball 2 speedrun to the leaderboards, a world record of 917. The run was very clean up until level 15, where he lost over 10 seconds due to a botched circle roll. He golded levels 16 and 17 due to him continuing to nail his pause jumps, but he unfortunately fell apart again in 18, as he died after collecting the furthest star in the level. Thankfully, he absolutely nailed 19, placing him a few seconds ahead of Thog. He modified Thog's route in 20 slightly to potentially cut out a star pause jump, but he barely missed a single star on this jump to the ground platform, making it not net any time save. So, was DHA happy with his new world record? No. In just two levels, 15 and 18, he had committed almost 25 seconds of non-pause jump mistakes, so he went to work trying to clean it up. The very next day, DHA got onto another great run. He was essentially tied with his PB out of level 14, keeping in mind that he is comparing against his best split times ever in each level instead of comparing directly to his PB. After nailing levels 15 and 18, he was 25 seconds ahead of his PB, his best pace ever by 8.5 seconds. Going into 19, he was easily on pace for the first ever sub-9. Unfortunately, he failed the pause jump strat on his first try, knocking two stars into the void, forcing him to reset the level. If he had a perfect level 20, he would still be able to just barely squeak it out. Unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be. A 9.05. DHA seemed to be more content with this run, seeming to not have too much motivation to improve it soon. However, the pressure on him would soon be reapplied, as Rare EG would make an emphatic return the very next day. somehow managed to do it again, coming out of nowhere to achieve an enormous PB and a new world record. EG changed his approach to level 16 slightly, knocking the first and third wooden planks into the water instead of the second and third to save a bit of time. EG exited level 18 eight seconds behind DHA's record, but an outstanding 19 and 20 allowed him to break what was possibly the game's last minute barrier. However, this rivalry between DHA and EG was far from over. Later that same day, DHA snapped back with an 848. 13 seconds ahead of EG into level 15, he unfortunately messed up pushing the triangle over the square, costing him an elevator cycle or roughly 11 seconds. 
He stuck the 2-3 plank push in 16 and maintained his roughly 2 second lead over EG going into level 20. Thankfully, finally, he hit a perfect level 20 in a world record for the first time ever, saving him around 6 more seconds over EG. However, DHA still wasn't satisfied. One stupid mistake in 15 had cost him a time in the 8-3x range. Thankfully, 5 days and over 250 runs later, the stars finally aligned for him. In level 13, he incorporated a strategy that involved purposefully dying on these spikes to activate a checkpoint later in the level that can be reset to, where after the 3 stars behind it can be collected and the checkpoint reset back to again. This strategy was found by complete accident by DHA, and nobody understood how it worked. But the secrets behind it were later uncovered once a similar strategy was found in level 4 of Red Ball 1. If you would like to learn more about it, consider checking out my Death Warp Explained video if you haven't already. Being close to his PB going into level 15, he didn't screw up getting the triangle over the square, placing him 12 seconds ahead. He switched to EG's 1-3 plank push in level 16, and he gained even more ground with a cleaner level 18 and 19, placing him 14 seconds ahead. But he missed a couple of pause jumps, leading to an 11 second PB. Regardless, DHA had achieved that 8-3x milestone. So, was he satisfied with his time yet? Still, no. This was essentially the first ever Red Ball 2 speedrun without any large mistakes, but he still didn't like the run. Small mistakes like the ones in levels 7 and 8 was enough to throw off his mood about the entire run. This 837 marked a real turning point in Red Ball 2 speedrunning in terms of optimization. For years, runners simply sought after a run that incorporated all run viable strategies without any large mistakes. Now, at least to DHA and Rare EG, every single second mattered. It was no longer possible to attain a world record with huge mistakes like a death in 18 or a cycle loss in 15. Five days later, Rare EG made another mark on the world record history, claiming to achieve an 837.01, barely besting DHA's 837.9. Unfortunately, EG didn't really care about uploading and submitting this sub-second improvement in the moment. The laptop that the video was housed on is lost, and even if the laptop is located, the random OBS recording of the run likely no longer exists. Funnily enough, I also failed to document a 25 levels world record of 1938 when I first started playing the game, with the OBS recording of it having since been deleted. Therefore, both categories in Red Ball 2 have a world record that is almost certainly lost media. Thankfully, the same day, he got onto a run that had a blisteringly fast early game. In level 5, he added a new strategy that involved executing a pause jump after collecting the first star, allowing him to gain a large amount of speed by jumping off of the back of the seesaw, enough to allow the gap at the end of the level to be crossed without a pause jump. Essentially committing no mistakes in levels 1 through 14, he was 11 seconds ahead going into level 15. Unfortunately, the pace toned down quite a bit after that, as a slow circle roll in 15, a missed pause jump in 16, and two missed pause jumps at the start of 20 led him to a world record of just 3.7 seconds. Two days later, DHA got a 1 through 14 that was almost as good as EG's, placing him on his best pace ever. Note that he is comparing against his best split times again. He nailed level 15, but exited quite a bit behind his best pace ever. Why? Because of a new strategy known as 15 Cycle Skip. On September 5th, former world record holder Thog N had found a difficult way to skip an entire elevator cycle in 15 by doing this maneuver. Normally, after putting the square and triangle into position, one would have to ride the elevator down to the circle compartment and then wait for the elevator to complete an entire cycle before being able to push the circle onto it. However, with this strategy, one could push the circle onto the elevator right away, saving around 10 seconds. DHA opted not to do the strategy because he was on his best pace ever, and knew that he could still score a new world record or even the first sub 830 without it. Level 17 and 18 were almost flawless, and he barely recovered a forward plank tip in level 19 to enter level 20 8 seconds ahead of EG's record. Things were looking good, but missed pause jumps started costing him greatly. His nerves were through the roof. Thankfully, he was able to pull things together, and he scored himself an 828. With an absolutely perfect level 20, this run could possibly have been an 81x, but it seemed like that would have to wait for a later day. 
In the description, DHA remarked that, from now on, level 15 cycle skip will be required to get a PB. DHA and EG would have to incorporate this extremely difficult strategy into their runs to have a chance at claiming the world record. It seems like the prospect of this may have spooked the two of them for a bit, as it wouldn't be until 2020 that a new world record would be set. But before then, DHA uploaded a video on October 7th that showed an example run generated by splicing together all of his best segments in each level of the game. The 20 levels time came out to a 740, showing just how much potential the game still had. It was unrealistic to match all of these splits in one run, but maybe, just maybe, it was realistic to achieve a time under 8 minutes with the game's current strategies. The seed of achieving another minute barrier of the game was planted, but it was unknown when or even if it would happen. After finishing yet another semester of college, EG got back on the Red Ball 2 grind to try to claim the record with 15 cycle skip. He got on a somewhat mediocre run that was over 10 seconds behind his PB into 15, but after nailing the death-defying strategy, he was now 4 seconds ahead. He performed the cycle skip at the start of the shape moving instead of at the end because it was slightly faster, slightly easier, and less costly if it was missed on the first try. He missed a pause jump in 17, but a solid 18 and 19 put him 6 seconds ahead of his PB, but 2 seconds behind DHA's record. He had around 7 seconds to save on DHA in level 20, and thankfully, a near flawless performance allowed him to save all 7, a new world record of 823. For around 4 months, DHA and EG had been trading incremental improvements of the world record back and forth. However, through this competition, neither of them had managed to achieve the run, a run that nailed every single strategy and every single double jump, leaving extremely little room for improvement. On April 1st, 2020, DHA began a run that could have possibly changed all of that, and unlike EG's Red Ball 3 record from the previous year, this run was uploaded as no joke. DHA was ready to obliterate Red Ball 2. It was hard to believe. Playing a game that had already become incredibly optimized, DHA had managed to improve the world record by 17 seconds and his PB by 22 seconds with a single run. Of the 16 frame perfect pause jumps that were now in the run, DHA hit 15 of them first try with the only miss coming in level 10, costing him a few seconds. He also had a small mistake at the start of 5, but aside from that, the rest of the run was played to near perfection for the strats he attempted. DHA proved with this run that achieving a time under 8 minutes wasn't a distant pipe dream. With just a bit more polish, it was certainly possible. But taking a step back, would anyone even be able to best this 806? As mentioned earlier, DHA set an absolutely jaw-dropping record of 4 minutes and 29 seconds in Red Ball 4 Volume 3, any percent glitchless, before moving on to Red Ball 2. This run stood for around 1 year and 9 months before being beaten by myself with a 427 and that was making use of a consistent setup for a strategy, 13 laser phase, that DHA did not have access to, which ended up saving me 3 seconds, making it hardly a fair fight. Knowing how, ahead of their time, DHA's records were able to be, just how long was his dominant Red Ball 2 record going to stand for? A few months after DHA set his 806, the top 5 runners of the game remained completely stagnant for almost an entire year. While Red Ball 1 and many other games in the series were getting swarms of new runners in 2021 due to the popularity of my Red Ball speedrunning video skyrocketing, Red Ball 2 remained almost completely dead. The game desperately needed a catalyst to motivate somebody to try to take the record. 
In March of 2020, two strategies had been discovered by Thog N that proved to be too difficult for runs, those being the faucet skip in 8 and the gate clip in 14, saving around 4 and 12 seconds respectively. The 8 skip involved pushing the wooden ball into the hole and then pause jumping off of it after collecting the stars, something that was really challenging to do since it wasn't a flat surface. One then had to execute a perfectly positioned pause jump on land to knock the pulley platform downward and squeeze through the gate before it fell back down. 14 gate clip involved collecting the stars at the bottom of the two wells using as little water as possible and then performing a pause jump on the ending gate. If Red Ball landed on it in just the right way, it would flip open for just enough time to allow Red Ball to pass into the ending tunnel. These strats were both too risky and inconsistent to implement at the time. But in 2021, the community had become far more ambitious in terms of incorporating strategies like these. A new runner opting to incorporate one or even both of these to try to claim the record was not out of the question. There was also a slightly faster method of completing level 15 discovered by DHA on October 8th, 2019, where he fell under the elevator and landed in the middle tunnel to complete the level instead of riding the elevator to it, saving around a second and a half. This was not worth going for in runs due to the extremely high risk and little reward, but he claimed that it's possible to get a faster cycle, but it's really hard. As it turns out, he was right. On April 28th, 2021, speedrunner XDXbox Jaja of Sub-20 Train fame became the first to achieve the cycle in an individual level speedrun, falling on the elevator and rolling into the tunnel instead of having to fall under it. He lost some time getting stuck between the elevator and the ceiling, but he still managed to save almost 4 seconds over DHA's method and about 6 seconds over normal. This technique, being coined Xbox Cycle, seemed to be the catalyst that Red Ball 2 needed, as speedrunners Norksor and Pogwin began a fierce competition for the level 15 individual level world record in May, for some reason. Nor scored a 43.2 on May 17th, 0.6 seconds faster than Xbox. Hogwin scored a 42.867 later that same day, and after that, they started using a strategy that was extremely inconsistent and unviable for runs to push the time even further. Regardless, XDX Box Jaja, Norksor, and Pogwin had proven the viability of yet another strategy that had yet to be implemented into full game runs, making the total time save possible from new strategies around 23 seconds. Through their shapes competition, Norksor and Pogwin decided to take a hand at attempting full game speedruns of Red Ball 2 using some of these strategies to try to topple DHA's 806 and achieve the first sub 8 in the game's history. Thankfully, on June 1st, 2021, exactly one year and two months after DHA set his monumental 806, Norksor finally had a chance to defeat DHA. Norksor got onto a run where he nailed the faucet skip in level 8, but had some sloppy gameplay in some of the other levels. In level 14, he attempted the gate clip, but he missed the pause jump multiple times, causing it to save much less time than it could have. He missed Xbox Cycle in 15 and had a sloppy level 18, but he was still 4 seconds ahead going into level 19. In level 19, he used a deterministic setup for jumping on the planks that involved two frame-perfect inputs, but it took him three tries to get it, placing him only two seconds ahead of DHA going into level 20. He nailed every single pause jump. After getting the crown, all he had to do was collect all the remaining stars with one last jump. And then... DHA's record survived by pixels, and Norksor ended with an 807. However, it wouldn't stay that way for much longer, as Pogwin was finally able to claim the record that very same day. In level 5, Pogwin committed the exact same bonking mistake that DHA had committed in his 806. However, thanks to not missing the pause jump in 10 and having a cleaner 11, Pogwin was able to build a lead of 4.6 seconds. 12 and 13 were a bit slower, but in level 14 he made an attempt for the gate clip. He nailed it first try, placing him 14 seconds ahead of DHA, easily on pace for a sub 8. If he nailed Xbox Cycle in 15, he would easily be on pace for a 7-4x, but he ended up just barely missing it. He took level 16 safe by pushing all three planks in the toxic water, and he missed some pause jumps at the start of 17. Now just 6.5 seconds ahead, he was on pace for breaking a new minute barrier, but just barely. He nailed the setup in 19 on his second try, leading to no significant time save. All he needed was a perfect level 20 to nail sub 8.
he nailed every pause jump in 20, but his movement was just a bit too unoptimal for his sub-8, and he scored himself an 801. Hogwin was thrilled about achieving the record, and DHA offered his congratulations for his seemingly immutable record finally being toppled. Pogwin kept grinding runs for sub-8, desperately wanting to be the first to achieve it, but he unfortunately wouldn't get the chance, as his shapes competitor Norixor would drop a bombshell the very next day. After hitting 8 faucet skip and 14 gate skip more optimally than he had in his PB, Norxor was 5 seconds ahead. His movement in level 15 was plenty fast enough to score himself an Xbox cycle, which would have put him on 7 for x pace, but he unfortunately didn't roll the circle far enough and had to correct it costing him the time save. Level 18 was cleaner than in his PB, and he got the 19 setup second try instead of third. Going into level 20, he was 7 seconds ahead of Pogwin, but would he be able to pull it together this time? Seven fifty-five. He had finally achieved the sub-8. He missed the first pause jump two times, but after hitting it on his third try, he executed everything afterwards flawlessly. However, this run still had a lot of room for improvement. The shape's experts, Pogwin and Norxor, had yet to hit the strategy that they had spent days practicing in a world record run, Xbox Cycle. A time in the 7-4-X range was imminent, but who would be the next to set a record? As it turns out, it was me. In 2021, I found myself on a mission to achieve every single main category world record in the Red Ball 4 Flash volumes, those being any percent, any percent glitchless, and 100% in volumes 1, 2, and 3, the low percent category in volume 1, and Red Ball 4 volumes 1 through 3 any percent and 100%. After months of setting new personal bests, I finally achieved my goal of the 12 out of 12 on June 8th. After shockingly claiming the 12 and 17 levels world records in Red Ball 1 shortly after, I somehow found myself in position to do something that I hadn't even thought of for over a year, achieving a series sweep. This time, I set my parameters on the categories that were included in the full series any% percent and 100% categories on the multiple Red Ball games leaderboard. This meant no Red Ball 5, no Red and Blue Balls games, which had since been added to speedrun.com, no Red Ball 4 mobile, and no glitchless or low percent categories, including the Red Ball 1 through 3, Red Ball 4 volumes 1 through 3, and full series multiple Red Ball games records. This left 18 total records that I sought to claim. I spent a lot of effort rebuilding my chops in Red Balls 2 and 3, both of which I hadn't touched in over a year, and on June 28th, I announced that I was going to stream attempts every single day to try to complete a full series any% percent speedrun in under 30 minutes, something which would require an absolutely outstanding run. What I didn't expect is that on July 1st, my fourth day of doing attempts, I would set a new Red Ball 2 world record inside of a full series any% percent record. Like Norxor, I was attempting the 8 faucet skip and the 14 gate clip, but my lack of 15 experience made it impossible for me to attain Xbox cycle in a run. I got a bit stuck on the gate in 14 when performing the clip, which cost me some time, but I still exited the level about 5 seconds ahead of Nor due to my cleaner execution earlier in the run. I nailed the second plank skip in level 16 as I found myself on low 29 pace in my full series any% percent run. I missed a pause jump in 17, and I unfortunately hit an easier 19 setup that I had found second try. Entering 20, I was just barely ahead of Norxor. I needed a perfect 20 to score a new record. Thankfully, I was able to do just that. A 753 in the middle of a full series speedrun. After a 312 Red Ball 1 time and a Red Ball 2 world record, I was now on the full series run of my life. Unfortunately, my Red Ball 3 was sluggish, I missed the boss roll strategy in Volume 1 that cost me 15 seconds, and in Volume 3, this absolutely heartbreaking event happened in the boss. Is it- I think it's over. That low 29 pace after Red Ball 2 ended with a 30-02. Still a world record, but devastatingly 3 seconds off of my goal. However, that didn't change the fact that I had just accomplished a Red Ball 2 record in the middle of the run, claiming the crown for the first time in almost a year and a half. Two days later, I thankfully achieved the sub-30 full series run that I was longing for, and I went on to have a tight world record battle against XDXbox Jaja in Red Ball 3, coming out on top by two frames, at least for the time being. 
My new conquest for the series sweep had rebirthed the former resistance that had sought to stop me in my tracks back in 2019. Starting on June 29th, they had been monitoring all of my activities, discussing the records that I was setting and how to reclaim them. They provided support to Xbox and Encredi, the two biggest obstacles that were standing in my way for the full series sweep, as they were both actively trying to improve the Red Ball 3 Any% percent and Red Ball 4 Volume 3 Any% percent records respectively. So, by July 4th, I had 15 out of 18 of the records that I needed. All that was left were Red Ball 3 1 through 3 100%, Full Series 100%, and Volume 3 Any% percent. Later that day, I got the two multiple Red Ball games records, leaving Volume 3 Any% percent as the only obstacle in my path. That night, I stayed up as long as I could, trying my hardest to beat Incredi's 355.77. I claimed a new PB of 357.3, but it just wasn't enough. While I was becoming more and more delirious, Xbox was still wide awake in Poland. And, to my horror, at 3.29am Eastern Time, Xbox posted this image. He had reclaimed the Red Ball 3 record. I conceded defeat and went to bed. The Resistance celebrated, but doubted that I had fully given up. EG needed insurance to make sure that I couldn't get another chance. On July 13th, EG claimed a 25 levels world record of 952, opting to keep it a secret for the time being. And then, three days later, he shared this with the resistance. A new 20 levels world record of 748, and a huge 25 levels world record 939. After learning the new strategies and putting in 265 runs, EG was definitively back on top in both categories. EG decided to upload the records that day, catching almost everybody in the community by surprise, including myself. In his 748, he had a suboptimal 5, 2 missed pause jumps in 8, no Xbox cycle, and a scary moment in 19, but everything aside from that was extremely solid and refined. Once again, EG had done what EG does best coming out of nowhere with an amazing new world record, pulling the rug out from under me once again. Thankfully, the very next day, I had the chance to get back on my feet. I completed levels 1 through 14 without committing any notable mistakes, putting me 5 seconds ahead of EG's record. By this point, I had learned how to achieve Xbox cycle in level 15, something that would have easily placed me on 7-3x pace, but I was unfortunately far too slow to hit it. I lost a bit of lead going into level 19, but I built it back to 5 seconds after executing the level cleaner than EG had. On pace for a low 7-4x, all I had to do was execute level 20 with surgical precision. It was looking good, but sadly, I pulled a Norksor right at the end. At this point, I had no idea if the record was still possible. I took a couple of glances at my timer, jumped to the boat, and life split displayed a 748.96, a time given by the game's auto splitter. I was sure that I had just choked the record. I had tied it to the second, but there was no way that a .96 was faster in terms of milliseconds than EG's run. After I completed my 25 levels run, someone in chat informed me that the milliseconds on EG's run was a .933. That called for a retime. The margin of error with the auto splitter is around a frame, plus or minus 0.033 seconds. There was a chance, though very slim, that I had actually tied the record. I didn't have my hopes up, but... Funnily enough, this had marked the second time that EG and I had tied a record in the Red Ball series to the exact frame. The first time being the Red Ball 17 levels record tie of 448 flat around 10 months prior. And poor Norksor was sat in third place both times. With this, EG and I both felt satisfied with our Red Ball 2 times and left the game alone, leaving our tie to stand. Meanwhile, Xbox was continuing his conquest to improve the record in Red Ball 3, eventually attaining a 514 flat on July 31st. After this, he zeroed in on Red Ball 2 as his next target, hoping to translate his individual level success into a full game world record. He spent early August grinding the game, achieving a 749 by the 8th of the month. The specialist was already at the footsteps of Red Ball 2 greatness, and everybody knew that the inevitable was bound to happen soon. Xbox was going to claim the record in the next few days. 
However, what everybody knew for certain was that there was zero chance that the two-way record tie to the frame would become a three-way tie. Xbox would claim the record outright and leave EG and I tied at second. The odds that three separate runners could possibly complete an eight minute long physics platformer game in exactly 14,068 frames on a leaderboard with less than 50 runners are so incredibly low that it put the event completely out of the question, right? Life Split showed a 748.97, but after several runners retiming the run over and over again, we all came to the same conclusion. Xbox had just created a three-way tie to the frame for the world record on the Red Ball 2 leaderboard. People, including myself, were absolutely stunned that this had actually happened. Comparing the three runs, each runner entered level 20 at vastly different times. First myself, then EG, then Xbox. But my missed star and Xbox's slightly more optimal movement compared to EG pulled us all exactly together at the end. Xbox, in his run, took a death in 13 and barely missed Xbox cycle in 15. It was abundantly clear to everybody that Xbox was going to snap the tie in a day or two, but it was still fun to bask in its ridiculousness while it lasted. The next day, Xbox achieved a 744.433, mainly thanks to cleaning up his death in 13, but he once again barely missed Xbox cycle. Xbox desperately wanted a 73x, but he could not hit the strategy that was named after him in a world record run. Again, on August 16th, he failed to achieve Xbox cycle, ending with a 743.7. The next day, August 17th, a solid level 18 put him on his best pace ever, and after hitting the 19 setup first try, all he had to do was nail the pause jumps in level 20, and he would have a 3x to his name, without Xbox cycle. Unfortunately, he was a frame early on one of his pause jumps, costing him the milestone. 740.467. Thankfully, on the same day, eight attempts later, he finally did what he had been trying to do for so long in level 15. Hit Xbox cycle on a decent run. He sailed through levels 16 through 19, and once again, it all came down to level 20. Thankfully, this time, he wouldn't miss any pause jumps. 738.867. The first 7.3x and the first world record ever set with Xbox cycle in it. The run had a couple of missed pause jumps in levels 8 and 9, and a couple of things about the run were slightly unoptimal, so there was definitely a bit of room for improvement. But Xbox opted to take a short break from full game runs after achieving this milestone. However, in September, something reeled him back in. It wasn't another competitor. EG, Nor, and I, the only other people with sub 8s, weren't playing the game at all. You see, that thing, that desire, was to be the first person to complete Red Ball 2 in less than 7 minutes and 30 seconds.
Despite so many fails, close calls, and heartbreaking runs, Xbox managed to complete Red Ball 2 in 7 minutes, 29 seconds, and 100 milliseconds, while only competing with himself. The run that he achieved was absolutely phenomenal. Everything about the run was just so refined and polished. Uh, wait, I mean polished. Like Xbox had taken Red Ball 2 and broken it down to a science. Aside from a couple of tiny hiccups in 8 and 10, there are no obvious mistakes in this run that someone could point to as easy ways to improve. He had outstanding execution throughout the run, not missing a single pause jump, and he nailed Xbox Cycle in 15. After all of that, he went on to execute the 5 bonus levels almost flawlessly, also getting what is tied for the third best RNG possible in level 24, simply having to roll over two of the buttons, leading him to his fastest completion of the level ever in a run. He finished with a jaw-droppingly fast 25 levels time of 908.6. Xbox was overjoyed with the run, and he said the following while reflecting. After two 7-2x chokes and 20, I knew it was going to happen sooner than I thought, and it did. But what I didn't expect was going from a 9-17-25 levels to a 908 in an hour. This run is absolutely insane, and I'm done with Red Ball 2 for now. Shoutouts to DHA, Maximum, Pogwin, Norksor, EG, and Cat Roomba? This wouldn't be possible without them. Through his tirade, Xbox has completely left everybody else on the Red Ball 2 leaderboard in the dust. In 20 levels, he is almost 20 seconds ahead of second place, which is still the 748.933 tie between me and EG. With 25 levels, the picture is even clearer. He is over 30 seconds ahead of second place, EG, and 40 seconds ahead of third place, me. Xbox may be done with Red Ball 2 for now, but as it stands, he is in position to hold the crown potentially for longer than DHA did with his 806. However, aside from maybe cleaning up some movement here or there, what can be done to improve on Xbox's times? Is a sub-9 25 levels time or even a sub-7 20 levels time realistic? Well, there are currently a few individual level strategies that could be brought over to save quite a bit of time. Xbox cites implementing the 11 IL strategy as the most surefire path to sub-9 25 levels. By executing an extremely difficult box roll, it's possible to reach the platform on the lower level after only moving it a single time. Executed well, this can save 10 seconds over the normal method. Going further, in level 8, there is an IL strategy found by Xbox where the player pause jumps from the wooden ball directly onto the pulley instead of to the ground on the left where another pause jump has to be executed. This saves around 7 seconds. 
There is a way to complete level 10 without the use of the boat, requiring an insanely good corner boost off of this platform to allow the player to exit the toxic water without dying. This saves around 10 seconds, but without a setup currently existing, you can see Xbox having to make a lot of micro adjustments while in the air. It would be near impossible to hit in an actual run. Finally, there is the aisle shape strategy that was mentioned earlier in the video, where the square has to be launched over the triangle in a very unintentional and difficult manner. This can save around 5 seconds over Xbox cycle, but it is very inconsistent, and because of where red ball and the shapes start, it would be essentially impossible for a setup to be found. Adding up all of these time saves, a sub-7 time is certainly within the realm of possibility. However, with the current knowledge that we have about the game, the prospect of actually achieving a time like this in the foreseeable future doesn't seem too good. Regardless, Red Ball 2 has already become an incredibly optimized game, and it is amazing to look back and see how the game evolved from a lengthy, puzzle-filled chore to a highly exciting experience, thanks to pause jumping and the immense dedication of many different speedrunners. I'm excited to see where we take it in the years to come. Red Ball 2 is a game that was simply created as the next installment in the Red Ball series. Through the death of Flash on the web and the passage of time, it has become less and less known, falling far behind Red Ball 1 and the titan that is Red Ball 4 Mobile in terms of notoriety. However, through their dedication, speedrunners have been able to take Red Ball 2, a game that seemed destined to fade into the shadows of obscurity, and bring it into new light. Thank you all so much for learning about the story of Red Ball 2 speedrunning. Thank you all so much once again for making it all the way to the end of this video. I know it was a really long one, but uh, make sure to stay tuned for just a little bit longer as I have a $200 sub 9 reward thing to announce. While I'm talking, I'm gonna have the 20 levels progression graph playing right here and the credits playing over here. Um, and if you'd like to see any more of my, uh, graphs, like the 25 level, uh, world record progression graph, those are all housed on my speedrun graphs channel, so make sure to check that out if you're interested. It'll be linked in the description. If you did enjoy watching, dropping a sub to the channel would be much appreciated, as I still have a lot of games that I'm planning to make world record progression videos about, many of which are not in the Red Ball series. Uh, but for Red Ball, I do have the Red Ball world record progression video that I highly recommend you check out if you haven't already. It's also over an hour long, uh, but it's a really great video, uh, and if you enjoyed this video, you'll enjoy that one as well. But most importantly, a huge thank you goes out to Backspaced, Norksor, Thog N, Pogwin, Motor Jam, Rare EG, and XDXbox Jaja for helping me out with this video, making it would have basically been impossible without them. 2021 has been an absolutely insane year for this channel, going from 550 subscribers to over a hundred times that amount by the end of the year. And whether you've been here from the start or you just jumped aboard recently, I really do appreciate you all being here. Thank you so much. For a lot of you, this is probably the first time that you've seen my face on camera, though I did reveal that all the way back when EG got the first OX in Red Ball 1. As you probably noticed, all of my records in Red Ball 2 and other games in the Red Ball series were performed live on my Twitch channel, so definitely go consider dropping that a follow if you haven't already, as I definitely have some big plans in 2022 for the record that I'm uh, hoping to achieve, uh, most notably the one in this game right here. So uh, yeah, definitely go drop that a follow uh, so you can catch those live streams and whatnot. And if you aren't really a Twitch person, I do have my second channel, More Maximum, where I upload all of my personal bests and world records after the fact, so you can go uh, sub to that channel to stay tuned with all of that. But yeah, now time to announce the $200 sub 9 reward thing. For Red Ball 1 and Red Ball 4 Volume 1, the community hosted raffles where people basically had to get a certain time in the game to gain an entry into the raffle, and then winners were drawn uh, on a certain date. Uh, all of this has been funded by a generous donation that I got from Eugene Fettis of the creator of Red Ball, so huge thank you goes out to him. Uh, but this time we're doing things a little bit different. Now uh, all it's going to be is if you get a uh, sub 9 in the game, uh, you, you get a recorded run in Red Ball 2 and submit it to the uh, speedrun.com leaderboards and it gets accepted, uh, you'll automatically get a $20 prize and the first 10 people get those $20 prizes to do it. For people who already have a sub 9, uh, all you have to do is attain a sub 8 in the game and if you already have a, a sub 8, 
Uh, sorry, you're, you're fresh out of luck. If you are interested in the competition, there unfortunately isn't a tutorial for Red Ball 2 yet, but uh, you can check out the double jumping tutorial video that's on my channel that uh, covers how to pause jump in Red Ball 2. Uh, and I would just watch DHA's 806 and try to replicate whatever he does, because it's pretty good. Though I probably would try to add in the 19 setup that we found, uh, so just watch the world record for that. But yeah, you definitely want to join the Red Ball Speedrunning Discord server to get uh, help and ask questions and whatnot, so that'll be linked in the description. And then I also have a Discord server that'll be linked in the description that has a bunch of links to a bunch of different Flash speedrunning communities, so... Join that if you'd like to, you know, network out to any of those. And yeah, if a proper tutorial is made, I'll just link that in the description and whatnot. But yeah, that just about does it for this video. The uh, progression graph and the credits are probably winding up right now. So I thank you all so much once again for watching. And if you're watching this video around the release date, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas.